everyone for coming. And I'm so excited about doing this with Opus. And Opus has brought in all these wonderful supplies that I get to I get to share with you all. And um, there's a lot to cover. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to kind of go over the supplies and I'm going to do a little demo for each one. And um, I'm going to kind of go backwards instead. Of, I'll start with the origami because it's a clean activity, moving on to silver point, and then I'll move on to the uh, sumi. And what I'll do is I'm going to should talk about the products, kind of unbox them a little bit, and then I'll show a little demo. And then if you have questions, I'm going to ask for questions after each Thing. So hopefully we can get through this. We have a, you know, we have a good amount of time, but this this time will go fast. So I've got a lot of things on my table and I'm going to start, like I mentioned, I'll start with origami. So I'll start with Yasutomo. I've been working for Yasutomo for more than 30 years. So um, I'm an artist, but um, I also work for this art supply company. And it seems like my art is sort of infused with the art supply company because I develop products for them and it's sort of kind of been, it's been a joy to work for them for so many years and to be able to do this kind of, uh, you know, just be able to create products for people so that they can explore their creativity. So it's been a really enriching and wonderful experience. And so I'm just gonna kind of, this is so exciting because so, uh, Opus just brought all this in. So I'm gonna kind of move things out and I'll just kind of make it a little bit more, something that makes more sense anyway. <laughs> So we'll start with origami. I've been doing origami for probably since I was 12 years old. So I'm just going to bring this over. <clears throat> and if you're in origami, I know there's some ladies here that are part of my origami group. So I know that, that uh, you know, you've folded, you like folding origami. Now, I think of origami as a very mindful activity something that's good for people of all ages for um, their their uh, cognitive, you know, to to really help with their minds, um, spatial relationships, all kinds of things. So I've been doing origami forever. And Opus just brought in my, my series. This is actually, I'm going to toot my horn a little. This is paper that I designed for Yasutomo. And it's a series called the Watercolor Series. Um, the first one is called Dancing Cats, which I have a little, one of my little kitties is right here, this little black and white one. And the other one is uh, Doodle Dots. And the other one is Watercolor Leaves. Now these are packages, 24 sheets, six uh, colorways. And they're both, they're double-sided. And the reason uh, we picked double-sided is, is they're beautiful. So that the, you know, the, normally what you would see when you're folding something, you would see white. Well, we've got the other side. And I want to just show you a little bit on the history or not the history, but sort of where these came from. So the Dancing Cats, came from this journal page. <laughs> and that's basically what I did was I scanned these and you know digitized them and turned them into origami paper. And that's kind of well, this whole, what this series is about is it's just about my sketches turned into uh, paper. And that was a fun project for me to do. Um, I never had done that before and it was really fun. So, but this, um, this is the only paper right now, but I have to tell you, I, and I was in, Pamela said it was okay to do this. I have another paper that's coming out in December. This is my uh, collage paper series. It's actually painted papers that I uh, scanned and we turned into origami paper. And all this paper is printed in Japan. So it's perfectly square. It's perfectly foldable. There are no, you know, um, it doesn't crack. It's just the right weight for folding. But this one's also good for uh for collage and one thing i didn't know is these are all acid free so if you're if you are a scrapbooker or a collage artist and you want to just throw in some extra patterns these will are, are acid free and um yeah i just had to toot my horn a little and i'm so excited that there were new papers coming out but yasutomo um we've been importing uh origami paper for many years and we are the company that does exclusive designs. And of course I get to do them because right now, you know, I'm doing them, which is really fun. So these papers are very nice weight. They're going to be, you know, they've got the double sided. And I was making these little containers and I have to talk about these because I love these little tatos. These are like called tato. This one actually was perfect because I was making this yesterday and actually there's some more I wanted to show you real quick. 
Um, yeah, there we are. This one was, this is a little Tato, which is a little, basically it's a paper purse. And I was, I actually showed, uh, we did some of this Yasutomo Live. We did some of these a um, couple, a few months back or maybe earlier in the year. And I wanted to show you this kind of, this sort of uh, what happens, the process here. Here are my doodles that I've done. And then I cut them out and I store them in my little doodle dot box because why not? You know, now I'll, I'll know that this is holding the little dots that I fussy cut. Um, but they also have another little way. I like to have origami as a kind of a final, like a container or a gift, you know, like in in Japan, the gift uh, packaging is is just as important as the gift. And in these I wanted to show you actually how to make one of these. If you're in the mood to make one of these, <laughs> these are very handy for all kinds of things, for sewing, little threads, little small things. I'm not sure which one I'm gonna show you. Oh, and this one I wanted to show you. And I'm gonna jump all over the place. Um, one thing that uh, Opus brought in were these little shikishi boards, these little three inch adorable little shikishi boards. Well, they need to have a place to, you know, if you wanted to gift these, why not make a box for gifting? So anyway, if I want to, now I've got to figure out how to put that back. There we are. Um, there we are. They do come back together if you want them to. <laughs> there it goes. So this is one that has a three inch base so that it holds a three inch item. And then this one has more of a, uh, the other one has a two and three quarter inch base. And now I'm trying to remember how I folded them, but they are really fun to use, especially if you want to just do something with your shikishi, which I'm going to show you what I'm going to do with that. Um, maybe, yeah, let me just do a quick, just for fun. Let's hope I remember it. <laughs> Sometimes it's, you know, I'll just use this one. Okay, so now I won't go really slow, but some of you have done this before. Here's some boxes I wanted to show you, the cats and the leaves. But this paper is just fantastic. And the paper that Yasutomo um, we have a couple of manufacturers that are really incredible and um, they make the best papers for folding. So, of course, all papers from Japan for folding are really great. So for this one, I don't know which one I'm going to do, but I'm going to I'm going to try. I'm going to fold this one. This way with the pattern upside down and. For me, origami can be very relaxing, but then it can also be kind of, uh, you know, it, it takes a lot of concentration. That's the word I'm trying to come up with. Talking and doing origami is an interesting thing. I'm gonna just create, I've just folded these uh, in diagonally and I'm just gonna create a little tick mark on all of these little, just a little mark. I'm not really trying to, um, I don't wanna fold it all the way across. I'm just doing this. I'm just making a little tick right there just to, mark my spot. And then what I'm gonna do is take this, I hope I'm doing this right. <laughs> I'm gonna take this bottom edge right here and I'm gonna fold it up to that tick mark that I just made like this right there. And I'm just making sure that all the, this thing is lined up. And then I'm going to take this, I'm gonna fold it down in half like this. And then I'm gonna take that same piece and I'm gonna fold it in half. So. I've got one thing. I don't even know if I'm doing this right. I don't think I'm doing it right. You never know. It might be an interesting Tato. <laughs> I have no idea if I'm doing this right, but I'm going to try. Let's see what I'm doing to see if this is it. <laughs> I don't think I have this right. This happens to me. Uh, it's Friday. And uh, some of you that know me know that my, my folding skills on Friday may not be as good as they are on Monday, just because it's a busy week. Um, what I can do, though, is I can give everyone, I can give it to uh, Pamela and give you a link on how to fold these, because I do have recordings on how I folded these. As, same with the boxes. If you're interested in learning how to fold the box, this would probably be the best way to go about this um, instead of doing an origami class. Um, there's videos on how to make this box and on how to make these little Tato um, units. So I'll just go ahead and make sure that I'll send Pamela the link and then you, she can, you know, we can have it available. Or if you go on to Yasutomo, the Yasutomo uh, YouTube channel, you can find them there as well. So let's just, let's just go from there. <laughs> okay. Cause we've got a lot to cover. 
So the next thing I want to talk about, oh, before I do that, are there any questions regarding the origami paper? Is there, if, if there isn't, I'm going to move on. Everybody's, um, if not, uh, Pamela, are we okay on the? Uh, yeah, I do not see any uh, questions in the chat as of yet. Okay, great. So then everything's been answered. <laughs> so um, what we'll do is, you know, I mentioned the boxes and any, there's a lot of origami models on my channel, my YouTube channel, Karen Elaine's. There's also a lot on the uh, Yasutomo channel. So just go there and, and of course, any uh, YouTube have a, a lot of wonderful uh, instruction. And there's so many origami designers uh, as far as making models. I just make the paper. I just come up with paper. And Yasutomo has a great uh, array of papers, but these these are exclusive to Yasutomo only and they're lots of fun. So, okay. Now, so I'll move on to that, uh, from that. And I'm going to talk about the silver point tool. Now, Yasutomo had a silver point artist um, really help develop this because I had no idea about uh, silver point. Now, silver point, yeah, are they, they're amazing. They're like these tools. This is a really gorgeously crafted handle with a 99% a silver tip on the ends. And it comes actually, there are two tip sizes. One is a two millimeter and the other one, I think, I gotta make sure, sometimes I forget. Um, anyway, this is what the package looks like. Yep, it's a two millimeter. Um, so when you're in the stores, you see this in your store, this is what it looks like in the store. 99% silver um, in it. These are fantastic. Now, you'll wonder why, well, why would you use this for? Actually, historically, these were used by like uh, classical artists like Rembrandt and Dure. I don't know how to say Albrecht Dure. I have no idea if I'm pronouncing that right. Um, da Vinci. These were early drawing tools and they're really fantastic. Now, um, what it does is when you're drawing, I'm going to do a demo. I'll do a demo. Um, you'll be drawing on a surface that Yasutomo has, or you can draw on a gesso, pre gesso prepared surface. Um, if you have that, there's also um, silver point paper out in the market, but we've got this great, we've got mineral paper and I'm going to kind of bring in mineral paper right now because uh, mineral paper, which is a great surface for these. And I'm going to just, I'm going to demo this. This is our mineral paper, JMP100. This is a six by eight. It is made of calcium carbonate. It is a surface that uh, is impervious to wetness. You can, even though it's fairly thin, this is our uh, 100 pound or 150 GSM. It's, you know, kind of a, feels kind of like a, it's got a surface that some people say is like UPO, but it is not UPO. It's uh, calcium carbonate with a little bit of uh, PET um, recyclable plastic to kind of bond it. But mostly it's calcium carbonate, which is one of the most, you know, common elements in the world, very renewable, very, very plentiful, no, no trees are harmed. And it's very uh, eco-friendly to make this. And it's, it's great surface for, for drawing, painting, draw anything like that. Um, I use it for lots of things. Um, and I'm just bringing over this because some of these drawings here were done some of these, I started with the the uh, silver point tool and then I did some watercolor and they take markers really well, like uh, any type of pigmented marker. It's just amazing. It doesn't, it doesn't wrinkle. That's what's so cool about it. I'm bringing this piece out because I wanted to talk about the silver point. Now, silver point will not make marks on paper. So I've got a paper table here, paper covered table. It doesn't make marks on the table. It, make, it makes marks on this calcium carbonate surface, which is is uh, mineral paper or gesso, something like that. Um, clay, maybe some clay, I don't know exactly, but it has to be prepared with, with something like that. But I love the mineral paper because you don't have to prepare it. It's there, it's a great service. Now, the silver is being deposited onto the, onto the uh, paper. And what you're getting is you'll get, as you do layers, you make it darker by just not pushing harder. You just kind of 
create deeper layers by making, you know, going over and over and over until you get to the depth you want. Now I'm going to show you a drawing I've been working on. The thing about silver point is silver point is something you do that requires a lot of patience because if you're going to draw something like here, I'm going to just draw a leaf real quick. Now for me to make depth and interest in this leaf, I'm going to need to do some cross hatching. And if I'm going to shade it, I need to do some you know, serious, I need to work hard, uh, hard because I can't just push down where I don't have different levels of softness. Like with a pencil, you would have HB to, or H all the way to 10B. And that gives you that really dark lay down of graphite. Um, the, it doesn't smear. That's another thing. And you can kind of blend it with a, with a stump, but it doesn't really smear like graphite does. So that's kind of great, especially if you're doing like, if you want to use this as a drawing uh, tool for watercolor. Well, let me just show you one piece that I've been working on. And this has been taking a lot of time. <laughs> it's, you know, a couple hours of work here. Um, but this little rose thing that I'm drawing, this drawing that I've been doing, um, you start with the drawing. So here's, I've got just the outline of the rose. And this is how I did the whole drawing with just this tool here. And I made, my first line is very light. You can see, I'm just gonna bring this up so you can see a little bit better. So it's just kind of a very kind of a light gray. And then you, as you keep working and making shading um, and going throughout, you'll get deeper, deeper tones. Now, the beauty about the silver is it will tarnish over time if you want it to, um, when it's exposed to time, light, in certain humid conditions, you're gonna see a little tarnishing the way you would silver and it gives it a warm tone. It doesn't turn brown or weird, you know, it doesn't change it except it gives it a warmth, which is really gorgeous. It's very unusual, but you can arrest that. If you don't want that, you can put a coating on it and it won't tarnish just like you would on your silver. But I'm just gonna do like some little little bits of sort of, won't finish the whole thing because we'll, we'll be here all day, but just kind of, you would employ kind of the same techniques you would with drawing. You do cross hatching for shading, um, you know, light, just keep, make light little areas to, to make, um, you know, tone, different tones. And then the darker, you just, to create darker tones, you just keep making layers, but do it with a light touch. Don't, don't dig into the, to the, um, mineral paper. If you're using mineral paper, if you're using gesso, you can probably dig in a little bit. I do have a piece of gesso prepared um, watercolor paper just to show you. This was two coats of gesso. So if you could do this, if you want two coats of gesso and I sanded it just a little and I'm going to just start a little, you know, drawing, but it's the same thing. I go to the leaves all the time because I'm just loving leaves lately. Um, there's my first uh, my first uh, lay down of uh, color and not color, but silver. And then I can just start kind of thickening the line or if I want to create veins and if I want to create different thicknesses of the line, it's just, it's a very meditative actually, because you can, you, you know, you, it's very calming. You can't really be fast with this. It, it's not something you can uh, speed through. So it's really a calming activity. And I like having the idea that you don't have to sharpen this. You're not going to run out of lead ever. And it, you can sand the tips. So I'm going to give you a little bit of uh, care and feeding of these. If you find that the tip is too sharp out of the box, which I find, I can get it out of here. I don't think I've opened this one. Nope. Um, okay. So if you get the first, get the, the uh, tool. And this is a nice little package you can reuse. So I just, I don't keep this plastic part. I just keep this and now I've got a nice storage thing. Um, Yasutomo did a good job. I didn't, I used to do the packaging for Yas Yasutomo and since, and somebody, I did see this question, can can it be erased? I'm, yes, I'm gonna show you that in a moment. I just happened to get glance over to the chat, thank you. Um, this is pretty sharp, the little tip. I can, I think you can see that. It's kind of sharp and sometimes that can be, it's not so sharp that I'm going to poke myself, but it is sharp. And I prefer slightly duller tips. So you can see it's kind of at an angle. I hope you can see that. Um, what I do is I um, take a little fine grit sandpaper, like 300 or more, maybe 
even a 500, 600 grit. And I just gently go across the sandpaper just to kind of soften the tip a little. Um, this one I've had been working with for a really long time and it's really rounded and I love it. But, um, you know, you can get thinner lines and you can get thicker lines by going on the side of the tool and thinner lines by going on the tip. So let me tell you about the shading a little bit. Yes, it can, it can be erased. And I did bring an eraser. So let's say you have an area in your drawing and it's just a little too dark. You just maybe thought you went too far. You can use, uh, let me just grab this. This is just a little plain, any eraser will work. Um, you know, the white vinyl gummed eraser. But see, I'm able to take that, lift it off the mineral paper um, to light, give highlights. I don't know if you can see, I hope you can see that. So yes, you can use an eraser. I use an electric eraser and that really does it. Um, if I want to get some other areas, some erasers are going to lift better than others. Like this one, I don't even know the brand, but it just seems to lift better than that little one I just showed you. But yes, so you can erase. Um, can you erase it completely? Let's see. I don't, I'm not sure. I haven't tried. Yep, there it is. See, I was able to get that pretty much all the way off. And now I used some, another question I'm looking at. So um, so you can you use uh, regular gesso on the paper, on the, yes. I used regular Liquitex gesso. I did one coat, let it dry for a little bit. And then I did another coat in the other direction. And so this is a cold pressed watercolor and it gives me a little tooth. You can use hot press, you can use drawing paper, you can use scrapbook paper. Um, sometimes I take papers that I've been painting and I put a little gesso over it and then I can I can create marks and the gessoed part is the only place it shows the marks, which is pretty cool. So for a mixed medium, that's really great. Now, do you seal the drawing? I, not necessary to seal the drawing unless you don't want it to warm up uh, and tarnish. You know, if you want it to kind of get a warm glow, not a warm glow, but you know, a warmth to it, you would probably, you could put um, some, like a spray fixative if you want. Um, I also use, this is strange, people, uh, I don't know if I have it here, I'm going to grab it real quick. I bring it out all the time. Um, there's a product that I love to use, and I don't, I don't know if Opus carries it, but it's something called micro glaze. I use it for for sealing uh, inkjet prints, laser prints, watercolors, anything. I like, to, if you can put this in your toolbox, you'd be happy. <laughs> um, then another company that makes this stuff, it's the same thing, I'm gonna show it to you, is Distress Glaze. Distress Glaze is the same thing. It's made by the same company. This is the company that makes it. Ranger happens to market it and it's called Distress Glaze. So one and the same. Um, these, you just put it right over the drawing. So you can just stick it, you know, it's very, it's, mac, it's micro crystalline wax, you know, put it over there and it will seal it. You know, you have to buff it afterwards, but, you know, do use that. It's a great product for uh, all kinds of things. Um, but that's kind of, now there's a shine to it, but I think it, it should buff out with a rag, I'm thinking. It should. And if I just buff it out, it still has a shine. So you'll have a little shine, which isn't horrible, but it will seal it from uh, tarnishing or getting that warmth. But that's why I love, I like Silver Point because of the warmth that I'm getting. Um, I just think it's fantastic. So this, what I love about Silver Point too, is I can come back to this drawing. I can just kind of leave it by my desk and, you know, or if I have a moment just to make some, you know, little drawings and I can do stuff with this. I could make this as my initial drawing and then I could watercolor over it. I mean, it's kind of a nice tool. It's a nice drawing tool. Do I have a example? Um, I don't because Yasutomo has all my artwork that I usually send them all of it. So they do. And I think, I'm not sure there might be in the Yasutomo channel, there may be a video that I show some of the uh, tar tarnished ones. But what it does is you'll see, if you can see, I'm gonna kind of turn this here. Uh, it's harder to tell, but it does have, when you turn the the uh, drawing, you'll see that silver, that sterling, because this is silver. It's not, um, it's very shiny. It's different than, let's say, a uh, regular graphite drawing. It's very, it's got its own unique property and the tarnishing is very subtle. Um, of course, I live in the desert. I live in Arizona, so maybe it'll be different 
in a humid climate. Uh, but, uh, you know, if you put it behind glass, let's say you were going to frame something and you really liked it, you want to frame it. If you put it behind, you know, the uh, good museum glass, I don't think it will tarnish. Um, there's ways to kind of slow that down, but it's such a soft very hard to tell. It's not like a really obvious brown or anything. It's just a warmth that imparts. It's not like, you know, it's not, it might even turn darker, which is nice. You know how you've let your silver, if you let your silver tarnish, it kind of gets a darker finish. And so that it may turn the darks a little darker, which is really what I, what I like anyway. So now, is there any questions more on the, and yes, you can put watercolor on the gesso. Um, there's also a watercolor ground. I haven't tried using the watercolor ground, but I, you could watercolor on gesso. Absolutely. Um, it just does different. It, it reacts differently uh, than paper, of course. But yes, you could. But you can also use like a thin water, like thinned out acrylics too. So any more questions? I know I tried to answer some as they were coming in. What I do want to tell you also, there is something um, you can buy if you needed to, if you wanted to just do it, I found this silver point paper. <laughs> Can you believe it? They even have something called silver point paper. Um, it's very smooth. It's like a very hot press. So, you know, if you need, if you love silver point, try the tool because there's not, it's not the only, you know, mineral, mineral paper is a good service, but this is actually a very good service because um, I can draw in this and I can put a lot of pressure and it's not going to dent. And mineral paper is more delicate because it kind of dents. But um, so this is more like a cardstock. So I'm not sure how this would work with any, like with mineral or with watercolor. But I like this putting the watercolor, uh, you could put the water, the gesso on and then watercolor over it. And if I had some watercolors, I could show you right now. <laughs> I mean, I do have them, but they're not on my table. So any more questions about our silver point tool, two millimeter? and one millimeter, and this is a little thin one, so it makes really thin lines, this little one millimeter. It's a little scratchier than the two. So if you were only to get one, I'm gonna tell you right now, you'd get the two millimeter and they have refills. Oh, and I wanted to show you, which I didn't show you yet. This, these can, if you ever, ever run out of a silver, I don't, I don't think I will in my lifetime, but if you do, or for some reason you wanna switch out the, two, the tip, because you might have a couple tips, one will be sharper than the other or whatever. You just need the one handle and these things screw right into the handle and you wanna tighten them with your hand so they don't wobble around. But isn't that great? I just think these are fantastic, fantastic little tools. So if there's any more questions, I'm happy to answer while I'm going um, on to the next. There's one question here. Um, do you have any suggestions for medi other mediums you might use on the background of your drawing. So if you like, so other mediums, tinted gessos, um, if you want to do a tinted gesso, you could do that. Um, I use just like the surfaces or mineral paper, gesso prepared surfaces or silver point surfaces. But if you wanted to take some clear gesso, you know, um, there's gessos that are very clear. You could put that over a painting, let's say, or uh, a mixed media piece. You could just paint the gesso over that and then let it dry and you can mineral, you can silver point over that and you'll get a layer of, of marks. So I hope that, is that kind of the, I hope that's the, I hope that helps answer that question. Thank you, that's a great suggestion. Awesome. And, and it looks like we're all caught up now with the questions. Okay, good. So I'm gonna move on a little bit to this, but I'm gonna shift, I'll move on a little here. And I'm gonna kind of keep on the mineral paper thing just for a minute, because I wanted to tell you, since Opus has three sizes or three different weights, so mineral paper we're moving on to. So we've got the thin one I showed you a little bit ago. This is this JMP 100, which is a small pad, 100 uh, pounds. Then there's a, a larger pad, nine by 12, and that's a 100 pound weight. And then we have this other size, which is 11 by 14. So you can, you've got all three sizes. The, what I like about mineral paper, it's thin enough. If you want to do folding, you can fold it because it's got a very, you know, very nice, it makes very nice folds. If you wanted to create a journal, you can do that. 
Um, this would be a journal that your paper would never, ever wrinkle, which I think would be fun. I've got to do one. I haven't done one. Uh, but yes, you can stitch these, you know, make a journal and you can make a little watercolor journal that isn't really heavy, but your paper will not wrinkle. So here's just some examples of really wet into wet um, watercolor with some metallic colors, no leaking through. Silver point. I wanted to share that. That's right. Sometimes I forget what I do. I did silver point after I did the watercolor. I did silver point afterwards because I had, you know, some area where the and it looks like, and I'm going to show you right now, I'm going to just do a little more mark making, but it looks like even, you now once the watercolor is on there, it doesn't draw, it only draws on the areas where the mineral paper is present. So like here, if I tried to draw on this, let me see if I can do this. Um, I may not get any marks because very light, I can get them. Um, if the watercolor is sort of thin, I can get some marks, but you want that watercolor I mean, you want your surface to be that calcium carbonate, which is, I think also, that's what gesso is made out of. Calcium cal carbonate or marble dust, um, it works, it's, it's the same. So uh, this is amazing. Yes, yeah, so you can do your drawings and do your all that stuff, and then you can watercolor over it. And, yeah, and once you put something over it, unless it's gesso again, you won't be able to make marks. So I think that's kind of what I wanted to share about that. Um, this one was I drew first and then watercolored and it just kind of made a lot, it's sort of the line sort of disappeared, which I thought was cool because when I do watercolor, I don't really like my drawing to show. And, it, and it's, this is on mineral paper only or just a watercolor. But uh, look, and I was able to get this really nice little kind of very soft lines um, on that. So mineral paper is also good for scraffito. Like you can do lay colors down and put ink over it and then scratch into. You can use your tool also for that. If you have, if you're a scraffito person, of course I have to be careful here, which one I'm gonna use. I'm gonna grab my one that's a little sharper. So scraffito, which is a kind of, it's been a scratch art, whatever we wanna call it. Um, this is this, this uh, silver point tool, which, I don't think it was intended for that, but boy, does it make a really nice scraffito tool. You just have to clean it off when you're going to do your drawing. But yeah, so the tool can be used for more than just drawing on the mineral paper. You could use it for this kind of thing, just for making marks in your um, in your paper. Here we go. I'm just going to you can see. I'm able to scratch that wherever the, the ink was. I'm able to scratch that out with a crayon. This is actually a wax crayon underneath. There we go. Just a nice wax crayon under there. So this is it. There we go. More uses now. I just discovered one today for my use for the mineral paint or for the, uh, um, oh gosh, the silver point tool. All right. So any, if there's no more questions, I'm going to move on to um, uh, to the, the fun stuff. There's, of course, it's all fun, but I wanted to make sure I covered yeah. this. Yes. I are soft pastels harmonious when working on the mineral paper? Yes, um, I like. I don't really like using oil pastels. Um, I'll tell you one little weird thing about mineral paper, and I and they never could tell me what it why. But if I were to use, um, like an oil pastel, or something that has an oil or something oil, I haven't tried oil paint, but oil pastels definitely made the thin the mineral paper kind of buckled a little bit. I don't know why they wouldn't explain, but like our Niji Artist crayons, which are wax-based, they don't wrinkle the paper. So and it depends on the crayon, like if it has a little oil or petroleum, I think it might be the petroleum-based products will make this buckle. And as weird as can be, but that's what it does. But if you asked about pastels, oil pastels, no, but soft pastels are gorgeous. They blend gorgeous on this. I, I don't think, um, this is the packaging that I did for them. Um, this one had, this one is a watercolor wash first, or I think it was a, acrylic ink wash, and then I graphite. This is graphite over it. And then this one was, uh, I think, watercolor with graphite. One was an inkjet print, which was, it kind of was interesting. And the other one was acrylics, acrylic paints. So really everything except oil base stuff can are compatible with it. And it, and it doesn't like um, kind of has a tooth, so it's the color sinks in just a little bit. 
unlike Yupo, which you know is beautiful, um, Duralar, the the polyester film is made. It's coated in a way to accept uh, watercolors and the paints and stuff. This is just by nature. It's it's made to to accept that. So there is that. So if any more questions, if there aren't any more, I'll go ahead and move on to the Sumi, which is the messy part of our demo. <laughs> All right, we're all caught up with questions. Great. Well, we'll do Sumi and paper. So I'll start with the surface, the paper surface. And, and I'm so excited that you guys, that Yasu, that, not Yasutun, um, that Hope has brought in these these surfaces for creating. One is the, I'll just go over these first. This is um, the Asagami, which is a high quality Japanese art paper. It's made for certificates, photocopies, watercolors, gonzai, you know, watercolors, traditional watercolors. And it's got this interesting uh, kind of crispy texture. If you can, I don't know if you hear that on the, on your end, but um, it's see-through. You can see that it can be, tra it's a traceable. So it's pretty transparent. And I love using this. I actually have to cut this down to put in my printer because it's nine and a half by 10 and three quarters inches. And if centimeters, I don't know, but um, I cut it down to my inkjet or my printer. I have a laser printer and an inkjet. I've used it also on that. Um, it prints fantastic. So you can make prints. Now this paper, and I'm just gonna kind of do a quick thing. I'm gonna bring out something else that uh, Yasutomo has, and I'm gonna bring it out at the same time because I might as well use it. Um, this is the new Premier water brush, which is, an opus new, brand new thing. And I know I'm gonna bounce all over the place before I get to the semi part, but the, there's there uh, these brushes are great. They're made for Yasutomo. And I, I know these are originally were designed for Sumi ink because when I was in Japan 25 years ago, visiting before the water brushes ever came into the US or were distributed worldwide or Canada, um, these were in a little shop and I saw they were meant to be filled with sumi ink. So I filled these with sumi ink. You can fill them with water to do watercolors or anything you want, but I did it with sumi ink because that's kind of what it was initially intended for. So I'm going to probably make a mess like I always do. Oh, didn't make a mess there. Um, I'm going to show you. So with Asagami, when you're doing, when you're working with it, you know, just take, I'm going to take this pad out of the way and then I'll come back to the other papers too. Um, so Asagami, it's a, it is um, hemp, made out of hemp, forgot to tell you that. And it's just a fantastic Japanese paper. So it's a little on a pricier side compared to our 6H or 6JM, which Opus carries. That's our general kind of, you know, student grade. I don't want to call it student grade, but it is a different, it's, you know, le less expensive, more for practice. This has a slightly off white tone. It's a gorgeous, rich tone. It's not bright white. It's just got a really nice tone to it. And what I love about it, so like say, I'm just gonna do, I don't know, I'm gonna do a leaf because that's what I've been doing lately. Um, what I like about this is I'm making a nice line out. This is just straight sumi ink and it's not soaking through, okay? Most of the rice papers or washi papers you would get soak through and that's intentional. But this one is a little bit different. So you can go a little slower in your strokes and more intentional. You can take your time. And um, it's kind of just like drawing paper, really, or draw, you know, watercolor paper. It has this really nice feel to it that gives you, here we go, making a little thing here. Um, it gives you this nice, just nice drawing. Now, if you want to thin it out, let's say you want to add some water. Let's see, I should have brought, okay, I do have a water thingy. I'm just going to throw pour a little water in there and I'm going to thin out my ink just to give it a little, there we go. I'm just making a thin gray out of that. I'm going to push a little of this ink through. This is great. If you want to, if you're not, don't really like having ink all over the place and you just want to have some ink handy, put it in your water brush. It's going to really help. I'm going to grab a brush that, I'm just going to grab this brush I happen to have here just because I need a brush, a regular brush, um, a bamboo brush. 
and I'm going to make some a thin wash. Now, here's the difference. And you'll see when I do this other paper, uh, what, what you'll see what happens. So I want to make a little wash of color here or gray, because it's just gray. And I'm just going to kind of make a, you can see I'm just dragging it across. I've made a nice thin gray wash. And what's happening, it's not soaking in. It's kind of floating on top, which is really, really nice. I'm getting this beautiful tone. And it's, you will, you'll see when I get that in, oh yes. Okay, so I'm just gonna make a couple little marks just because I want that gray kind of showing that beautiful warm tone. Now this is gonna wrinkle and that's normal that it wrinkles, but it, it again, it's not soaking through. It's totally, <laughs> you can see on that other side, there's no nothing coming through. And this is a wonderful way to just kind of introduce yourself to the Asian style painting, or if you are a watercolor person, you love transparent watercolors, you love ink, or you do line and ink washes, whatever you do, this paper is fantastic because it's it's uh, it's like watercolor paper, but it has that transparency. So if you are a collage artist, you like to tear pieces of paper up, you've made marks, you've done things with it, like. You, you just love this paper. So it's not just for sumi painting. And I'm going to show you a little bit by the end of our time here together. I'll show you what I what it's what I use it for in the, you know, the for the sumi painting. But I love this because it kind of behaves like a watercolor paper. So that's Asagami. And it comes in a 20 sheet pack. It's uh very gorgeous. And like for this, I like to do like here, I just did this little leaf, but for me, I like to make marks on it for because I like to do collage, uh, a lot of collage. So I'll make some marks here. Oops. And this is like a meditative practice that I like to do is to make little circles. I'm just going to use my little water brush filled with some ink. And you can dilute the uh, ink out. This is like a pen. Now I've got a basically a sumi ink pen. And I can vary the 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 darkness and the light just by putting a little water in it. So here, I'm just dipping a little water, but I'm still getting ink coming from the barrel, which is pretty cool. And um, I'm able to get really interesting dark and light kind of marks going on here. So I'll be using this in a collage going forward. Um, I'll tear off a piece and it's a little for little bits of collage. And I, I have some examples of those finished pieces but this is kind of how I create kind of a mindful exercise and then use that later for collage. And if I want to squeeze a little bit of the color out, just gently squeeze, not too hard. There's a little button on the side, different than the other water brushes that have a barrel. You squeeze the whole barrel. This is, you push this little uh, bladder on both sides. And this can be, if you really want some quick, well, quick clean out, you would push this plunger down. Now these, just so you know, they fill up differently also than the uh, water brushes of the other kind. The way you fill these, and I know I've got one somewhere here. Nope, I can just grab one of these. Um, if you want to fill one, these are great little usable, reusable containers too, by the way. So let's say you've got a whole bunch of pens you want to carry. Um, these are fantastic. They actually have different lengths. So you can kind of, it sort of kind of, you know, has these little sort of notches here. So if you want to carry a brush or a bunch of brushes, you've got, you know, you can. You can carry maybe three water brushes in this, or you could, you know, carry, I'm not sure we can carry one of these, but you could try. Yeah, you could carry one of these. So you can take um, you can take your brushes and travel with them and protect your tips. So this, we picked this. Yes, a demo uh, together. We picked this because of that uh, portability and reusability. So you're not throwing away a, a package. You can leave this to hang in your studio. Um, leave this little piece up here. It's all one molded piece, so you really can't cut that off. But you can hang, you know, use it, put something on it um, to hang it. But really, you've got a very versatile package. But don't throw those away. <laughs> um, they're very handy. Now this, just to show you quickly, I'm gonna show you how I fill it. There's two ways. One, you can take off the, take this off. And now you've got this little plunger thing. Oop, there we go. It's kind of hard to, it's got a really super strong, uh, it's like a syringe. 
very strong, um, very tight seal here. So I'm going to take it in my water and I'm just going to grab some water while it's fresh. I thought I'd do it now because this gonna, water is going to be dark. Does the semi dry up in the brushes? No, I have had brushes for years um, filled and with acrylic inks even, and it doesn't clog. Um, it just depends on what kind of pigments you use. So it could be, you know, use um, inks that are good for uh, fountain pens. Sumi ink is fine. And I'll tell you the two different kinds. So I'll, I'll explain that in a sec. But yes, um, it doesn't dry up. But you do have to keep, you know, oops, wherever that is. But it's, there it is. <laughs> keep this on like that. And what I like to do, just as a little extra, because I live in the desert. It gets really dry here. Anybody that lives in the desert knows. I put them, um, I put them in a little baggie just to finish, or I'll put them in my one of these, just an extra barrier from the dryness. And someone else does no, so it doesn't dry up. Okay, no, you don't have to clean them with each use, but I'll show you how to clean them between colors if you're using them for watercolors. So back to this, I'm gonna fill this. So I take the plunger and I keep, I hear it goes like this. I'm gonna push the plunger all the way down. And I'm going to take it and put it in my water or ink. If you have ink, you do it in an ink bottle or just a little cup. I'm going to pull it up and it brings in only about that much liquid. You can see it only brings a small amount. So what I do is I push it up. I feel like I'm at, uh, at a hospital or something here. <laughs> so I'm going to push it up all the way until all the air is out. Oh, as far as I can go, because I've got, there's liquid here. Now I've got some, I can actually do another pull and I can pull all the way and you can do this until it's all the way full. It's pretty full now. You can see the water, it's all done. So this is my water brush. So I can show you some fun painting things, but filling it with water, if you want to clean it. So basically, oops, they come really starched. You can see that's really hard. I forgot to tell you. Most, you know, most brushes come with starch, obviously to protect the tips, but you want to uh, take that starch out before you start to use it. So um, this one, you can clean quickly by pushing that plunger down. And if you want to get rid of the water and you want to store it for whatever reason, just push it down and it all kind of like a squirt brush. Um, if you want to just dispense ink or water or color, you just push this bladder. So that's kind of the care and feeding of that. Um, I have had, I've actually pulled, um, I pulled it out this morning. In fact, I'll do it now. I'll prove, I'll show you. Um, wherever I put my brushes up, I thought I did. No, I, did. I don't know where I put them again. Who knows? Oh, they're in an I see where they are. I'm going to grab them because I had gotten these. I'm just going to grab them. These are my water brushes. I keep them like filled. This is how I do it. I just put them in a little baggie and I, I have, this is acrylic ink. It's a uh, so it used to be called splash ink. It's like a, a high flow acrylic. And it's still, this is the marker uh, version. Um, ooh, I can start painting. This is an acrylic ink. So you could use uh, like uh, Dr. Martin's um, watercolors, fluid ink, anything that's fluid. This is, uh, but that's an acrylic and that's been here. I think this has been filled for about three years. So that's just to kind of show you that these are very good. And that's one thing I forgot to show you is that there's a marker tip, which I love. Yeah, the marker tip. So I filled this today with Sumi ink and I have this incredible dark, you know, um, dense marker. So it works like a marker. The good news is it doesn't smell like a marker. It's permanent, light fast. It's water resistant um, depending on the uh, color, you know, or depending on the which surface you're working on, but you know, so you have a marker, and then you can have brushes as well. So that so you've got all those brush tips, and you have a flat also for washes. I just wanted to share with you now that I've got those, and these I'll go ahead and I'll show you the storage thing on this. I just love this. I always store them like this, and then because the plungers are out, you see the plungers make them longer now, but at least I can store them um, without. You know, I can kind of keep them at the length that they need to be. And then the more ink is used, the shorter they get. But um, that's one way you can store them to keep them, you know, if you're traveling, you might even want to be really, if you really want to be careful, because if you're in a flight, you never know. You can even just tape the sides, tape around here, and you're pretty sealed. That's that one. 
Okay, so let's go. So we've got this Asagami. So that's, we, we talked about Asagami. Um, it's a very beautiful paper. I'm going to show you a couple of examples. Oh, here we go. A um, few examples of papers that I've done with Asagami. Like this is a printed paper. It's a collage that I had scanned and then I printed and it just prints out gorgeous. So now I've got a collage paper that I can tear. Um, it's going to make beautiful. Let me show you what I mean. So I've got this beautiful paper that has little threads, a little nice little threads that I can just, uh, way different than copy paper. It's translucent. So whatever's underneath is going to show, especially if I use matte medium. So that's really great. So Asagami is great for that. And this is a piece of Asagami that I gel printed. And it's also really, you know, so you can gel print on it if you're a gel printer. This is some Asagami that I um, just made marks, diluted marks. And I just did this over and over. I think I was a Yasuchamo Live, I think. Didn't soak through. And I will be using this as a collage paper. I'll probably scan it first and then use it. But um, this is just with different shades of from darkest black to the gray, light grays with a brush. Very simple. Um, here's another one. Well, this is the other paper, and I'll show you that. The Torinoco. Now, let me explain Torinoco, which is the next paper I wanted to show you. That's this one. It looks it looks similar to Asagami, but it's more opaque. It's a little thicker. I'm just going to bring this out. It's a little thicker. Feels not as crispy. It's got a rough side and a very smooth side, and you would want to paint on the smooth side, by the way. Um, so I'm going to just do another little thing here um, just to show you different things you can do. Um, so here, the same thing with this one. Uh, let's see, I'm going to grab this, my brush. I'm going to take this brush out because I like using these. Um, so let's say you like to do semi-painting, but you don't like the, the absorbent paper. This is a beautiful paper for that. So same thing, I'm just going to do like, I don't know. I'm just going to make up stuff <laughs> just because I am going to make some little drawings. Just sort of mm, I'm just kind of can make some a little drawing. There we go. Of a leaf. And I didn't put on purpose. I didn't add, bring any color at all. Um, I didn't bring any of my watercolors, which I normally love working in color, but I thought it'd be fun today to just work with monochrome, just black and white only. So I've just made three little leaves. And now I'm gonna just stick with my monochrome thing here, and my theme here of just working with that, just one color. Except I'm gonna bring in something that I thought, oh, I forgot I was gonna to talk to you about. So this is where I bring in a lot of stuff. Now, <laughs> Opus also has these two brand new Chinese inks and they're not new to us, but they're such a great uh, ink. If you want to work in monochrome, but you want some a little bit of warmth, a little bit of cool, these are awesome for that. So I'm going to bring these in because I want to do a little bit working with that. Um, these inks come like in these great little pour spout things. These are brand new, so I've never used them. Um, so you'll see what you kind of have to do when you just buy them. What you need to do, because these are both have a little ceramic ball inside. It has the, the pigments need to be mixed up because this is a Chinese, really dense, finely ground ink, just like the Japanese sumi ink. It's just Chinese ink, but it's still the same. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, you just need to shake it up and you have to shake until you hear the ball moving. So get some exercise. And then when you start hearing that ball, which I do here, now you can pour the ink. So I'm going to take a, a little dish and I'm going to pour it out. And I love this little spout. And I don't like messy. I'm kind of a weird person. I don't like stuff on my hands. Anyway, this is very nice because I'm able to get the, uh, I'm going to pour a little bit more. I'm able to get a nice clean pour. And then I can just close the thing up and I'm good to go. I'm not going to have ink all over my table. There we are. So this ink, and I'm going to show you while I'm, I'm going to get the other paper out just to show you a very dramatic difference between the papers. This is the uh, the Gossen paper. That's another paper from Japan that we are uh, that Opus has introduced. It feels very much like the Torinoco, but it's 
but it's going to be way different. So it feels the same. You can barely tell when you're just holding them in your hand. This is Torinoco. This is Gazan. They're similar in weight. I think Torinoco is a little bit lighter. Gazan is just a little heavier. Very similar. But I'm going to show you. This is Gazan now. This is Torinoco. And I'm going to set this aside for a second. And I'm going to repeat kind of what I did, um, except I'm going to use... I'm going to use this gold, uh, Chinese gold ink. I'm going to show you how fun this is. So I'm going to kind of do the same thing. I'm just going to do like a little, oh, now this one, I have to go quickly because the when I hesitate, the uh, ink is going to go in sink inside. And I'm going to show you the difference. See how it soaked through? Um, did not soak through here. And I took my time on the drawing on this. This one, I had to kind of move. So you have to, it's just a different mindset when you're doing this. you got to move quickly when you're doing this because if you don't move quickly, I'll show you what happens. You'll get, there we go. I've got some fun little design going on here. You'll get spread. So I'm going to show you that when I mean. If I hesitate, I'm going to just push my, just hold it down. And the more I hold it down, I'll just get a big dot, which is kind of nice, making marks here. Um, if I do that on this paper, it's not going to move. It just floats right on top. It won't. It doesn't spread at all. So they're just, they're both very different in the way that you'll work with this. And I'll, you'll see what I mean as I kind of move towards. So we've got Torinoco, and I'm going to go ahead and just, now I've got my brush filled with, let's say, I'm gonna just kind of do a dark, kind of a tone of color here, just to kind of show you this it just floats on top. If I put a little black in here, it's just, whoa, little spreads, kind of like watercolor on watercolor paper, right? On sized paper, see how it's spread? And I'm getting this sort of spread thing happening. Now I'm gonna take, a that'll take a while to dry, but I've got this kind of great graduated thing. And if I wanted to, very similar to watercolor, I could dab, that off and lighten it a little bit because I did get a little heavy on it. So you've got control the way you would with a sized paper, like a watercolor paper, a little more control. Now well, here's the beauty of the Gossin paper. More traditional for Sumi painting um, because it has this very beautiful, It's um, it soaks in and there's a reason why it's good. It shows every brush stroke you make. So if I wanted to make a, uh, a wash, I better just kind of make See how it just soaked it all in and it went through? That's good. This is where it was beautiful about this paper. This, um, I'll put a little gold in that. Just want to show you what I would do here. This one, I would just kind of drag it across and I'll get a graduated line. This is just all kind of a play here. <laughs> here, I just dipped it in. There we go. Just to kind of change it up a little bit. Normally, I wouldn't have done the outline with this, but I just wanted to try something new. Um, here, I will show you that let's say you do a wash of color, or it could be watercolor too. This doesn't have to be, um, it doesn't have to be black. It could be, you know, your watercolors. I'm just going to make some marks on this here. And that's what I like about this. You can make, just do this, make marks and make collage papers if you don't want to paint paintings um, you can and you could be more traditional uh, having a traditional approach towards these supplies or you could go like the way I do I just kind of experiment and try different things um, so this one I'm going to put some of this gold I'm just going to show you when you put it on it actually will uh, the gold will pop will kind of rise I'm just going to let that wait for it's got it's going to take a while it has to dry first so when it dries, you might see some of that happening. See the gold kind of popping through. Um, these will in a moment once once the puddle goes away. But so there are these two different papers, completely type different types of paper, three different. So we Torinoco does this beautiful watercolor wash, very thin lines. You can control a lot more control, and this is a lot more spontaneous. And the paper sees every brush stroke. That in this one you can kind of float color on. This one you have to just one time and that's it. So I'm going to talk about and put these down. They're not the most pretty things in the world, but they just wanted to show you. Um, the next thing that we have is 
this is also paper and it's shikishi, the little shikishi boards that Opus just brought in. Um, first of all, I love these little tiny ones and this three piece set I'm gonna show you. One is, so these are five by sevens and they're nice because you can put them in a standard frame. I can unbox these here and get them, unwrap them. Okay, so they come, this one is a set with, you get three different papers to try. One is Torinoco, which is a smooth. There's a Gassen and a Hosho. And Gassen being the smooth, Hosho being the, the um, texture, slight texture to it. So you get to try different three different ways. Now, it can be intimidating because it's all framed. It's like a framed thing. Like, oh no, what do I do? If I make I mess it up once, it's gonna be terrible. Oh, well, no worries, because I wanna show you, you know, these, you can do all kinds of things with these. Not only can you do the what's traditionally used, what these are traditionally used for, which um, actually, um, oh, there they are, right in front of me. So traditionally, they're used for autographs in Japan, autographs, bamboo, or painting, you know, sumi paintings. This one is uh, the smooth one. I just did this a couple weeks ago. Here's on the Torinoko, which it's, you can see it doesn't soak in the way the, the Gossen and the Hosho do. So you're going to have a different feel to it. This is with watercolor, and this is how I prefer to paint. This is using uh, Gonzai watercolors, which are Japanese watercolors. You can use Western watercolors, European watercolors. Um, I love doing stuff like that on it. This is using the gold. This is using the gold Chinese, Chinese ink. And what it did is it soaked in and made this nice little thing of gold. And I'm going to show you how I do that. Um, the other one is edigami, which I love. <clears throat> edigami is like a type of style of Japanese art that is so, and I, mean, my, I might pronounce it incorrectly, but it's spelled E-T-E-G-A-M-I. And etegami or itagami, either way, it is very fun. And it, it's open to so much trend, you know, so much interpretation. So basically you're doing a, an ink drawing, very spontaneous and very loose. And you do lettering the same way. And you can use watercolor to fill in or not. Now, here's what I want to talk about, about the shikishi. If you're nervous about making painting directly on the shikishi, you can always do your paintings on a piece of your paper, then pick the ones you like. You know, here, I love this one. So this is a, uh, a little, we don't make mistakes, just happy little accidents. And very simple, uh, the simpler, the better. But once you uh, finish them, you can actually mount them directly to your shikishi. So then you've got, you, if you want to save that, or let's say you've got a board, I'll tell you that in a second, um, that you messed up, you can put a collage or something over it. But um, this one, you I just cut it just a little smaller than the gold foil that's there. And I will use, and I won't show you today, there is a, a demo that we did and I showed it the last Yasutomo Live. Um, I used Nori paste and I, I pasted the back. I brushed on the back with the paste, um, of the back of the artwork, and then I glued it on to the shikishi. So you can do it that way if you want. If you're nervous about that this is a one way to go and i really love doing it that way because then you can just be free and make all kinds of paintings and then you can decide which ones you want to mount or not now there's another thing i use shikishi board board for <clears throat> is i spray the background with an ink and it just and i wipe i basically spray and let it kind of sit and this is a delicate paper if it's wet so i be carefully wipe the edges from, and then it gives me that beautiful border. And then I make, can make collages. So this one, I just stuck a um, piece of like a paper doll collage that I made and I wrote uh, directly on it with an acrylic paint pen. So so the paste I'm using, yes, thank you. I will give you that info. And I think Opus, I thought I saw that on, I thought I saw it on your website. I hope, I think I did. Um, the, this is the paste that I use. It's called Nori. Nori paste comes in a little jar. And Pamela, do you? I think you do carry it, right? Yes, I see that you, yeah. So Nori is awesome for not only this, but it's a, it's a great paste. It doesn't replace your PVA, your white glues for quick uh, stick 
kind of things, but I love using it for any rice paper. When I'm collaging with rice paper, I use nori paste it is because you have repositionable time. So let's say you're painting you. I'll just show you this. Okay, so that's been used. It's almost done. Um, you can use your finger, use a brush, uh, brush it gently on the back of your artwork like this, and just go gently with like a sheep hair brush, um, dilute it with a little water. So And it's okay to soak this paper completely because the paint isn't going to go anywhere. Soak it completely, let it sit a bit, and um, it's, you have repositionable, you have lots of time to position it. So then let's say you've got a wet piece here. And right now when it's wet, it's more delicate. So you just have to be mindful, just picking it up gently while it's wet, but very gently, because it's going to be very, very, uh, it seems more delicate and it feels like it can tear and it could. So you just put it on, you can go, just find the edge. I'm going to just show you this. So find the edge. And because nori paste is repositionable, you've got time to move around. If you use a different adhesive, once you stick it down, it's you can't, you're stuck, you're you're committed. Here, nori paste, you can kind of move it until you find until you position it the way you like. You've got time. Is the more nori paste you add, the more it's positionable. And then just take something that another new another thing that um, that uh, Opus has brought in, and I've always Got to bring it out. I know it was here because it was on my table earlier. There it is. <laughs> this is what I use. This is the the Baron or Baden. And what I do is you put it in your hand, finger, you put three fingers in. You've got a little surface here. And now I never do it straight on the artwork because you're going to ruin your artwork. But let's say you have a piece of deli paper or some, some paper. Let's see, is that one? No. Something. Oh, gosh. <laughs> I'll find something. Okay, let's pretend this is a piece of rice paper. Okay, you put another piece of paper, a barrier, and then you just rub. And what that's, this gives the nicest, smoothest, you know, helps to get that glue nice and flat. It's also good for um, burnishing on gel prints. If you're taking, you know, if you're doing a jelly printing and you just want to give that, you know, push it with this, this nice, this does not grab the paper. It doesn't tear. It's a banana leaf. I think banana leaf, I hope. <laughs> but anyway, something that you could, that's what it's used for, is for burnishing glue, like when you're gluing things down. So, you know, you wanna do it, you won't tear it if I go like this. Um, of course, I don't wanna glue it upside down, but I just try not to scratch, scratch, scratch that. So I usually put something on top, you know, whether it be whatever it is, something that, uh, jelly paper is my favorite or just some bond paper. But that's what I'm using that for. So I just showed you that product because I didn't want to forget that. And that's why I use it. Um, there's other things I've used it for, but that's mostly for, for mounting paper to boards like this. And there's another thing that I can explain with the Nori is I use it also to mount, in which I'm going to show you, I've got it in my little like, thing here. We've got 15 minutes, right? Um, so I've got this other, a lot of times when you're doing artworks on rice paper, which I know I have a bunch, <laughs> and it's thin, right? So you've got, there it is, that's not it. Um, let's say you've got them, you know, all these pieces and you decide you want it to mount or you want to make one, you want to frame one, because not all of them turn out, right? Some of them turn out great, some of them not so great. So this is the one I did, okay. This, you can see, there's a difference between a rough, unfinished, unmounted uh, sumi painting. This one has been mount, this one has actually been mounted on another sheet of uh, rice paper or gossan, and it's been uh, fused with the nori paste. So you can see it's got weight to it, it feels like board. So and it makes the painting much more, um, uh, you know, you can see it better, all the details. Now here it's not mounted, so you, you know, it's a little different. It changes the property of your painting. So you, when you're doing all your paintings, your sumi paintings, um, think, don't, don't discard them and just think about, okay, can this be mounted? Okay, so mounting it is what I mean with the, the glue. Okay, so let's go, one more thing. I'm gonna show you, because this would be the last things I'm gonna show you. Um, the last but not least, that's for sure. The, the sumi sets that, you're, that Opus just brought in, has everything you need but the paper. So, you know, the paper I just showed you. So you can use 
When you're practicing SUMI, you can do it on newsprint, you can do it on 6H paper, whatever type of paper you have. And um, this is the set, what you need. This is the liquid SUMI ink set, and it has two of our really good brushes. Well, you know, decent brushes. They're not fancy, fancy, but they'll, they'll do the job. CC brushes and a little detail brush. I love the SW series. Oh my, it's really my favorite, um, the SW series. These are just nice bamboo handles, natural hair. And then it has liquid sumi ink, which is our, um, I would, this is the ink I recommend for fountain pens and for your water brushes. Um, there's two different inks that Yasutomo carries. There's this one, which is also a new, um, it's also an Opus KF series and the KY series. This is a green bottle, it's still black ink. This is just a plain black and white bottle. The difference is between the two is this one here has just a little PVA in it to give it a little more water resistance. It's very, a small amount. They both look exactly the same out of the jars or out of the bottle, but one is got a little PVA, and they, but they do perform very much the same. So I wouldn't use these in, this one in my water brush. That's, it may clog because it has glue in it, just a little. Years ago, it had lacquer in it, but lacquer is bad for you. So they switched it to PVA. So this one is the ink that you would use in this. And um, I'm just, well, I can do it with any ink. I'm gonna not open this bottle because I just don't wanna open it. But it comes with, if you go to the bottom of it, which it doesn't, it has a surprise. <laughs> it has instructions on how to paint a poppy. And I did this, I don't know, a couple of years ago, maybe a year ago or so, but um, you scan the QR code and you'll get a whole lesson on how to paint a poppy. So that's kind of fun. And I'll tell you the truth, I forgot how to paint it, so I won't paint, demo it today, <laughs> but I will demo the bamboo because I remember that. Um, but it comes with a ceramic dish to pour your ink in, which is what I have here. The two brushes, all you need is paper and just practice with, what, um, with whatever you have. Um, that's this set. And then the other set is the um, same brushes you'll get, but you're gonna be grinding your own ink. And, that in itself is a wonderful experience. If you have the time and you want to do it, grinding your own ink is really nice. You you grind the ink, you put the water in, and it's got this very meditative experience. And it, it's wonderful. You can control the amount of density of the ink and the ink sticks store and last forever. You get the same brushes. And on the inside, you get a, a, a lesson on how to uh, do bamboo. And I'm gonna do bamboo real quick for you. And I'm gonna explain something before I, as I, you know, just so if you're doing learning bamboo for the first time, I think, you, you know, best thing to do is to make, do practice strokes. So practice strokes, um, I usually start with the bit, the, the stalk or the branch or the stem. I start with creating, uh, just, I just practice that motion and I do it several times so that I get the feel for that. And then I practice the, after that, oops, there it is. I practice the branches so I can get a feel for how that brush works, how I can make little branches. And then I practice a whole sheet of leaves. Now that, those three combined are gonna give you a really nice looking bamboo. Now I won't put you through the that. I'm gonna just kind of show you what I do in my last 10 minutes, because it's only gonna take a few minutes here and then, there we go. And I've got some inks here already set, so I don't have to pour out any more. And I always use a, a mat. And here, I wanted to show you this before. Me. This is some uh, stuff I've made with the gold and silver mark making ink, mark making with that gold and silver ink with the different papers. Just wanted to show you those before I went on to the bamboo. But here, I've got my little thing here. I'm, I've cut some paper down because I don't want to use a cool sheet. My table isn't big enough really to do a fill sheet. This is, I believe, the Gaussian. I hope it's, I hope it is. We'll find out. Um, I'll know right away if it's the Gaussian. And I do have my favorite brushes for doing certain things. Um, if you're into making, if you're doing, I'm kind of a, not a Sumi master by any means. I have not studied Sumi ink as long as so many beautiful, you know, Sumi masters have. I've been around Sumi ink for 30 years but I have you know, very minimal skills there. So learning, oh, the mat is made of felt. And you can get this at dollar Japanese dollar stores. 
Um, it's just a mat for painting. You can use, uh, I think, Daiso, you know, very, uh, just painting mats for um, doing sumi. And it's black because of the black ink and you usually go off the page. Uh, you can also get it at a craft store as well. Just plain black mat. Uh, co uh, felt cotton, I, I think it might be cotton, it might be polyester, but it's just a felt material. So it's nice because it kind of gives you a little surface to paint on. So I use my, I've got my own little th three brushes that I seem, seem to use. This brush is in the two kits. This is a fantastic brush for making fine lines. So that's for my branches. I use one for my stock. So I'm going to just kind of do this quickly because I don't want to, uh, I only have a few minutes. But uh, I'm going to dip my brush. And this is not the way a lot of masters do it. We have a lot better uh, way. But I'm going to just show you how I'm doing this. I'm going to fill my brush as much as I can with the light gray, with the light color. It's diluted sumi ink, mostly water. You can see I've got it filled. And then I'm going to tip it in my black, which has that gold in it too. But I just tipped it right in there. And I'm going to just create... Uh, starting with the bottom, going up, I'm going to create a stem. And, and I'm going to start by going and pausing. And then I go, pause. And it's not going to, I'm not going to have all the, it's not going to, you see what's going on? I'm just kind of getting that feel of the bamboo. But I have to go slow now to get the rest of that ink to reach to the end of the page. There. So there's one stock. I'm going to make a second one, filling my brush. And I'm going to tip it with the gold, and I'm going to do a second bright, a second stock. And I think I'll just have it kind of, I kind of like that one actually, but I'll do another one. So I'll show you the process. So I'm going to go quicker this time at the bottom. Maybe I'll make that one go up. And I'm going to curve it just a little slow. And then you can go like make it just like kind of, you have to pause. And that gives you a little more ink. It kind of just deposits a little bit more. And I'm going to go all the way off. Okay. So that's, my stocks. Okay, so my brush is like that. That's normal. Um, you just want to take your brush and when you're finished with that brush, take it, clean it out as much as possible, and then just wipe it until it comes to a nice sharp point. And then store it horizontally or hang it. Okay, next is my, uh, my stem. This is the brush that's in your set. And if you're interested in the brushes from Yasutomo, we have a line called uh, Wafude. Wafude brushes. They're um, really in beautifully made brushes from Japan. And they, this is one of the Wafude brushes. I just wanted to share with you so you know what I'm using. I'm going to use that for the leaves and the, um, just I have more control over that rather than the other. The uh, CC brush is going to, you're going to get not the same exact look because it's a bigger brush, but you can, you'll get, I think in the video that's in the, in the kit, we'll show you what it looks like with that brush. So now this one gives me really fine lines. And I usually try to practice it a few times with a piece of paper, just with a, um, just to see what my lines are going to be. And I have to go fast. Okay. So you just, you want to go quickly with these, because if you, if you hesitate, you're going to get, which is kind of nice. You can get like little nodules, which is great for your branches, if you hesitate. So I'm going to just go ahead and I'm going to make my little uh, little joints that go in between. And I'm going, to, going fast, just kind of like this. And I'm holding my brush kind of up as much upright as I can. And I'm going to go and I'm going to make little branches. Okay, and I'm going to make maybe another one like that. Okay. And then I'm going to alternate and go here and here, and then alternate here, here, and here. And maybe another one. Because every time I make a branch, I get to make a leaf. Every time I make one of these little things. So um, yes, you'd want something like soft because it helps if you're, especially as your paper, you know, as the paint is absorbing underneath. So yes, and it feels really good on your hand. So I've kind of only, uh, let's see, I'm gonna go ahead and do this. So now I'm gonna take my my branch and just, oop. now I have a right-handed person and I tend to do, I tend to just wanna rotate my paper because sometimes my hand, if I'm trying, um, it's just hard for me to, to 
do it this way. So I have, I like to rotate my paper. I know that's not the purest way to do it, but you know what works for me. <laughs> and I realized I just did the branch on the same side. I shouldn't have done that. I should have brought it over here. So, oh, well, that's what happens when I'm talking, when I'm working. So the basically I'm just making branches here and that's it. All right, now I'm done with the branches. They're not the best or the stems. Now I'm gonna make my leaves. Leaves have a landing and taking off motion when you're doing it. So let's say you're doing leaves and you wanna just, you can do it in any, you can do it all solid black or you can do it in grays, whatever you want. Leaves are take off and land, land okay? So, and you need to have your brush plant with plenty of water because if you don't, once you lose the water, you it doesn't work. So just so you can see, I'm kind of making this land takeoff motion and my brush kind of looks like that. So you practice that a few times and get the feel, otherwise your leaves are gonna look a little wonky. <laughs> so I'm gonna go ahead and fill my brush with sort of a light, kind of a mix it up a little bit like that. And I'm just gonna take from my little place here and I'm just gonna do a landing and take it off. Here, here, oops, here. And you want your motion to be free, you know, like your shoulder needs to be hinged or unhinged. Um, and you want your, you can make your bamboo going, you can make the leaves going in all kinds of directions if you want, um, but there we go, something like that. Now, usually I haven't done it in a month, so it's, I'm not as, you know, it's nice to be kind of practiced, you know, when you've done this and you're holding your brush, not too tight, not too close to the end. I tend to drop it down, but I, I need to have it up here. And yeah, I'll just do this. Yeah, and there, and see my brush, my um, my leaves are taking a different shape because I'm changing the way I'm moving it. So practice, 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 muscle memory will help you with that. I'm just gonna make these lighter so that they recede. So if you use a light gray, you're gonna get a lighter tone and that's gonna make your, your leaves look farther away than the other ones. Okay, so there, I think this needs a little more and I'm just gonna, I don't know, oh, I know how I'll do this. I'll just do some leaves kind of, I mean, it won't, I'll just leave it alone. Now I started my, but that's it <laughs> on the bamboo. Okay, so the small branch of the rock, oh, the way, the way I said, the reason I said that, because I believe in bamboo, um, I wanted it to be every other going on the opposite side of the stalk, of the trunk or the stalk. So here I have one branch, one, one every other one. See, I, I alternate here. I went both sides. And I actually, someone told me, and it may be not even right. I don't know. I haven't put a little, it might not even be true, but somebody said that, oh, that's bad, but it maybe it isn't. I don't know. Um, so what will happen was what will happen is this will dry. You'll see the little stems, the heart of the leaf here. But that's it on that one. And then I, if I like this, I'll do several in a session, a whole bunch. And then I may only like two out of all the you know I've done. And if I like it, I'll do a little seal somewhere, you know, a little with a little red ink somewhere like here. If I like them, I usually do a little. Uh, that finishes it off. And, you know, if you want to, if you like them, you just put your own chop. If you want to take like this one is one I carved out of an eraser. And this is a Japanese chop I got in Japan. But here you can see how the um, subtlety of the, you can see it looks like I drew those lines, but I actually just the light color um, going over it, it just looks like a little line. So that, do you have any questions on that? And then I'm, I'm good. <laughs> Beautiful, Karen. We're good. How about Pamela? <laughs> yeah, really beautiful. Really nice to watch you use the Sumi inks. Because I think we did it, right? We did it an hour. We're, we've kind of done it an hour and a half, right? Yeah, yeah. You know, we we did it. You did it. Oh. <laughs> Everyone. So, oh, this has been one of the demos. Oh, that's so sweet. Daryl said, oh, that's very nice. Thank you. <laughs> I do have one question for I you. I love that um, everyone is writing notes. Thank you. Pat's here. All oh, people that I know are here. I can't see you because I only see my uh, I only see my my spotlighted video. But um, I see there are people here like Pat and 
Elke and seeing that anybody else. Can we put it on? Can we stop the recording and then put it on um, gallery for a minute? Is it possible? Um. Yeah, I can. I can stop the. Well, recording. You know what? I could. I, now I think I could hear you. I can. Yeah, I can stop it.